Once you decided to pursue the Cisco Certified Architect certification, how did you go about preparing and studying for it, Alvaro? Uh, well, you know, as Khalid said, uh, the, the short answer is we didn't prepare. Okay. <laughs> we, uh, this is this is a certification based on experience, on, sure. on your ability to apply the knowledge that you have to the specific situation that, in this case, the certification presents you with. And this is day in and day out what you do with customers. You come in, you talk about their network, you talk about where they're going with their business, and, and you then apply your technical knowledge to that. There's really no way to prepare for that except having the experience Work itself. Work experience is important. Right, so on one hand, yeah, we didn't prepare. On the other hand, we've been preparing for the last 15 years. Sure. And, and, and to me, that, that is the, the real value of the certification. Was there anything else that you wanted to add, uh, Khalid? Were there any other resources that you could have looked upon to maybe even, you know, outside of the work experience? No, actually, it's very well put. Uh, I think you, for me, as Alvaro said, I've prepared for this for 17 years at Cisco. I didn't have to sit down. Oh, the only pay, uh, thing that I had to sit down was to write my report and create my presentation. Mm -hmm. uh, understanding the mindset of the questions that are put out there, how to actually put them in the most concise way mm -hmm. in my presentation, which I had to present to an ex executive uh, leader who will review from the business aspect of it. The technology aspect of it was pretty easy because that's what I do for my job day in and day out. So it's, it's, a, it's a very interesting blend uh, from that perspective that some of it I, had to, I didn't have to prepare at all. There were pieces in that exam that I had to think through that if I am presenting this to a senior leader in, an, in a company, how would I approach this answer for a CIO or a CTO to look at it and says, yeah, what you're su proposing to me is relevant. Mm -hmm. Because in my day in and day out work, I don't do any cost analysis and say, here's where your cost savings are not coming in the solution that has been put out there. And that's why I would like you to consider some of these options that will give you more efficient way of saving money by the, by the uh, problem that was uh, given to me. So I would say 95% of the thing didn't require any work. 5% for somebody who, like me, who does day in and day out very hardcore technology work, did require some business reading that I had to do to come up with my final presentation for a business leader that I had to present. Sure. Now, in regard to the format of the board exam, um, how does it tie into the relationship to your real work experience? I mean, I know we talked about that here a little bit, but if we can go uh, into a little bit more. It, it is definitely very, very realistic. Okay. Uh, the same things that you would do with a customer, come in, do a presentation on what your thoughts are, where they are, where they're going, your understanding, your recommendations, same type of scenario. Uh, interaction, back and forth, some questions, same type of things. And, and of course, the other part that is very realistic is what customers always do. They give you a problem, you solve it, and then they say, oh, but we want to do this other thing. Mm -hmm. And now you have to uh, you know, think on your feet and provide a different answer. Okay. And, and that's the format of the exam. It's very, very realistic. Um, I, I would say almost 90, 95% of what happens in real life. Great. Anything else you wanted to add, Colin? Uh, actually, actually that's, that's, that is very true from my experience as well. Uh, some of the times you get people who are very rigid, and I, I appreciated that, that some guys were on the board. I know that they, they knew that my answer was right, but they were deliberately arguing on a point, which happens a lot in customer scenario, that piece of, part of the exam was to keeping your, pa keeping your patience. You know that this guy on the other end who's sitting knows that I, my assessment is very accurate. And that there is unreasonable questioning at that times that are asked, which is very similar to customer scenarios that we walk into. There is somebody who's read a white paper and he questions something that is absolutely irrelevant to the solution or architecture you're proposing. And to, to, to Alvaro's point, th it was that realistic that at times you have to bite your tongue and agree with the person and say, but here's the point that I'm trying to emphasize that you have to look at from the other angle. That's why your uh, network has inefficiencies. That's why your operations is having trouble. And that's a very uh, realistic situation that we go through every day with our customers, that you have to satisfy, uh, satisfy the architects, then you have to satisfy, satisfy the design guys, and then you have to sit down with the director of operations saying, this idea is great, but here's why it will hurt your operations. And along the chain, you will find one or two 
at times unreasonable individuals that you do have to satisfy. Mm -hmm. And I think it was very, very realistic from my experience. Good, mm -hmm. good. Now, let's talk about the board exam itself and, and, and your, what you experienced. So can each of you walk through the day of the board exam and, and the process that each of you experienced uh, the day of? So, right, right, so by the time we get there, um, we have already been given some materials, background on the company. Um, again, just like you would in a normal situation, you know what the company is about. Um, background as well on uh, the problems that they're having or the direction that they want to take. And so we prepared a, a presentation. So we come in and, and we do a presentation for their, for their board, for their executives, maybe technical people, and um, there's questions and answers. Usually, uh, one of the interesting parts as well is that in the mix of the people that you're presenting to, there's not only the, the high level CTO or CIO or C something, but there's also potentially lower level people, like the director of operations, or someone who's you know, day in and day out managing the equipment. So it is interesting because now you have to go up and down and be able to present the technical issues, the business issues, and, and be able to have all of them understand mm -hmm. the point that you're trying to make. Um, so once you make your presentation, there's you know, questions and answers. And then um, the, the, the group here comes back and, and they tell you, well, now there's a change. Now we changed our strategy. Now we did something different. Now we're going in a different direction. And we have some time. Uh, a couple of hours, I believe, to go and redo, or hopefully not redo, but adapt our thinking and adapt our solution to now the new, the new circumstances. And then we come back and do another short presentation uh, about that and more questions and answers. And, and that's, that's pretty much it. Okay, uh, Khalid, how, how was your day? And you walk us through your process and what you experienced. So I'd say for the first time in my, what, 12, 13 years, I was nervous. <laughs> uh, walking into the exam because uh, I when I was writing the report I was pretty satisfied with my report but I wasn't sure is there any twist that I missed out that there was an expectation and the question and answer the first discussion that I, I had to present my solution was very interesting as they kept it at different level uh, and generally at times you don't interact with all the levels at the same time so you have to, what was challenging for me over there was I had to be prepared to answer from a 100,000 foot view all of a sudden to a 50 foot view. And that swing at times I felt was disturbing my rhythm. But that was also challenging. That piece was challenging. And twist was interesting part of it because you know, knew walking in that there will be a twist. Mm -hmm. But generally in customer situation, we are lucky that we don't get that disturbance of the rhythm. That when you're going out to present to a CTO or CIO, that's a very different mindset and skill set that is needed. But at times it does happen that uh, we've had a couple of situations where you have that scenario where there is a director, a technical director, and they have their principal engineer sitting in the room. And at a lot of times your engineers, as we know, are very disruptive in discussions when you're presenting to management. So. I would say it has happened to me in two, three times in my career. And the CCA, it happened quite regularly during the board exam. Is all of a sudden, there's a very deep technical question. And somebody would say, yeah, but that's irrelevant. If th th somebody who's being the CIO said, that's irrelevant to me to come down to my level and tell, come up to my level and say, this is what is very relevant. Here's what my cost savings will come from. I don't care why you're moving some of these technology pieces from a particular network to the second network that I've acquired. But what is relevant to me is w w how I will achieve operational efficiencies in this network. So that swing during the exam, well, I found it a little challenging. Uh, uh, but you had to adopt to it. Mm -hmm. So that's that way I think it has some very, very interesting and challenging pieces during the board exam. And it wasn't, I was nervous.